ACOG has had a long history of advocacy in, in vaccinations. Uh, about 15 years ago, ACOG established an expert work group on vaccinations. That work group has done tremendous work over the last 15 years as far as uh, education of our fellows, uh, education of patients, uh, advocacy for vaccines in general. Many patients are hesitant to take vaccinations for a variety of reasons, whether it's a cultural reason, whether it's due to misinformation, whether it's just a patient choice. And especially during the pandemic and as we get into the major rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, I, I thought that it was very important that we continue this momentum uh, as far as vaccine advocacy, not only for the importance of everybody being vaccinated against COVID-19, but also the administration of the more routine vaccinations. There are two vaccines that are routinely recommended for pregnant women outside of COVID, and those are influenza vaccine as well as pertussis-containing vaccines. With pertussis-containing vaccines, that's actually intended for uh, prevention of pertussis in newborn infants. We have not seen an issue with that, and it's not surprising given uh, the additional restrictions, right, on uh, visitation and group settings and so forth. Influenza, on the other hand, is, a, is an incredibly uh, interesting story because because the incidence of flu across the United States has been really dramatically low. You know, masking probably not only prevents respiratory infections like COVID, but also other infections like influenza or even RSV or respiratory syncytial virus, which is a significant respiratory issue for, for young children. So we have not seen an uptick um, in any obstetric infections that are due to you know, any changes in vaccination. But it is important that we continue to be diligent about that, um, especially as we see um, you know, public settings opening up for more, uh, for more access and gatherings. I think it's very hard to say definitively how COVID has affected the uptake of other routine vaccinations. We do uh, understand that the uptake of preventative care visits in general has been down during COVID. There was some concern that routine things like pap smears, like uh, annual mammography and the like, that there was a, a decreased uptake of these preventative services. I think in general, the pandemic prohibited people early on from going to their doctor's offices because of, of, of barriers, uh, uh, access to those offices, uh, perhaps just fear of uh, engaging the medical system. For me, what I try to do is make sure I'm talking to patients um, to help manage their expectations, but also to make sure people understand what happens in those preventive visits, right? It's really about making sure we maintain health during the course of pregnancy because that's the best way to ensure we have both a healthy mom and a healthy baby in the end. So we have done a lot to expand access through virtual visits like phone visits or televisits through video visits and so forth. So I think it's really about making sure we communicate effectively, that we're responsive to questions, uh, and that we continue to encourage individuals to say, we are doing the best we can to protect you while you come in for any sort of preventive care visit.